Hey everybody, welcome back to Ravenstead. It's time for another build. I've got an idea for another piece of scattered terrain. It's going to be a witch's circle with a hinge and some cool boulders around there. Uh, before we get to work though, I wanted to mention really quickly I've got a Kickstarter project that's going to launch this coming week. I'll put some more info in the uh, description down below and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But let's go ahead and get to this build. Why don't you watch over my shoulder and let's get something made. All right, let's get into this build. I've got the base here. I'm just going to trace out uh, kind of a roundish shape. And then uh, I'm going to use a hot wire cutter. I've had this for about 20 years rattling around in a box. I hardly ever use it, but uh, it was pretty handy for this one. I still end up using a craft knife quite a bit on this. Uh, the texture was okay but it got me the basic shape that I wanted. And uh, like I said, I use a craft knife here. I don't cut myself, so don't worry about it. I'm just gonna whittle this down, get the shape that I want. Anything not square, basically. You know, since these are basically uh, organic scatter terrain, I wanna make sure that they look as natural as possible, even though it is just a big blob of foam. Hopefully we can get there. I like to have a mini at hand. I got that miniature up there for scale. Kind of get an idea of the build. Make sure that it has plenty of playable areas. Do a little texturing here with a brass brush. I like a brass brush over a steel one. It doesn't cut quite as aggressively. But you still get a good texture in there. And then uh, a little piece of rolled up aluminum foil. I'm going to put a little extra texture in there. Make sure I don't have any, uh, you know, factory surfaces left on this phone. Check for some playable areas. It looks good. Now we're building a witch's circle, so I've got to have some hinge stones. I'm just whittling that down with my uh, fingers. The broken texture on this foam looks really good when you go in and paint it up. Gives a real good stone look. I'm just dry fitting everything here. Heave that big stone right on top. So hot glue these down. I will have some seams that I have to work in later on, but that's okay. We can hide those little uh, happy mistakes. Any of the blobs of glue or weird looking seams, anything like that, we can hide later with uh, flocking. I'll go over the piece here with some Mod Podge, uh, just a mixture of black uh, acrylic paint and Mod Podge. Let that dry. While that's drying, I decided I wanted some mushrooms on this build. I got these from a uh, craft store. This is part of a shoo, well, that was cool. Part of a uh, floral arrangement. I just cut off a little toothpick there, and that's going to be the stem of the mushroom. I'll just get these all set up in a little block of foam so I can glue them down. This was after the second cup of coffee. A little shaky there. <laughs> there we go. And then I'll paint these up. That color is uh, cinnamon. There is no synonym for cinnamon. So I did some in the lighter color and then a darker brown. And when I put these on the build, uh, I'll be going over them with the washes too, so some brown washes, and that'll tie it all in. Do a little dry brush in here, bring out all the stone areas. This will be more or less a grassy area around those hinge stones. Really careful to preserve all my shadows, especially that nice deep one there. So make sure you're uh, dry brushing in the proper direction. You know, if you want to fill in those shadowed areas, then you just kind of follow the contours of the foam. And that's just some uh, light gray. And then uh, once I've got that base coat on, I want to really highlight all the edges. So I'm using a uh, light beige color. Hit all the high spots. Again, kind of preserving those shadows, those undertones. I'm going to plant some mushrooms. A little dab of hot glue there. It's good to have a little pilot hole there so you don't uh, end up 
crushing or damaging the little mushroom. They're pretty delicate. You just slide that right in. So we'll get a couple of those. They kind of bunch up, grove up when the conditions are right. We'll go over this piece with some uh, burnt umber wash. That's just an acrylic ink and uh, water. A couple drops of jet dry to cut down on the bubbles and uh, that makes it kind of just flow onto the piece a little better too. A little green wash. That'll give us some green undertones. And then I'll hit this with a little bit of Vallejo rust wash just for that uh, iron oxide look on the on the stone. Gives it some interest, some different tones. We'll let that dry and then uh, we'll start putting some flocking down. There we go. Last little touches here. Perfect. We'll put on some uh, PVA glue. I'm just going to brush this in all the areas that I want uh, to look grassy. So the first flocking I'll use is a fine, uh, fine flocking and then I'll use some medium texture flocking and then some clump foliage to kind of tie everything in. I imagine this uh, witch's circle kind of situated down in a forest so it would tie in pretty good with some of the other uh, pieces that we've made with trees. Pretty liberal with this stuff. Shake off the excess. Let's see what we've got. There we go. I don't know where that little clump came from, but yeah, we're gonna pick that out of there. I'm not ready to do that yet. Left a little bald spot, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more flocking in. There we go. Nice instant grass. It really brings out the colors of those mushrooms too. Now they have that that green undertone there. This is some coarse flocking, and I'm using a really watered down PVA glue. It's about 50 50 mix. And I like to sprinkle a little of the fine flocking over top, and it just kind of fills in the gaps, makes it uh, makes the textures mix together a little better. Yeah, that's starting to look grassy. And again, here we're kind of covering up our mistakes, tying everything together. medium flocking here there everywhere got to give places for all the little critters to to live little field mice like to hang out around this place and now some uh, clump foliage put that in with uh, regular PVA glue now once my once these pieces are done I usually go over them with a thin layer of sprayed urethane I use a satin urethane on that, and that helps to to make it a little bit more durable at the game table because everybody's going to want to pick these up and look at them. Get some bigger bushes in here. Looks like we needed maybe one more right here. Yep, I got a little chipmunk that lives there. There we go. All right, I'm going to give you guys a closer look at this. I'll spin it for you. And uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit, too, while you're having a look about my Kickstarter that's coming up. I'm going to be launching that on April 11th. I'll put a link for it in the description below. There's some of the brass tokens that are going to be part of that project. I like to use tokens like that for uh, giving people inspiration or showing advantage or spell effects or something like that at the table. So anyway, if you get a chance, check out the Kickstarter. Love to have you on an adventure here at Ravenstead. There's our witch casting her spells. There's another little sneak peek of the brass tokens. So hope you guys get the chance to check it out. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.